today we have the latest version of the EG4 budget server rack battery. This is the cheapest server rack battery that you can actually buy today. And we have five of them, so we're gonna install them in this server rack over here. So first we need to add the server ears so we can connect it to this rack. Last battery, man, this has been a lot of work. I took about an hour and a half and I am tired. So please ask for a friend's help when you're building this at home. How cool is that? This is 30 kilowatt hours of lithium iron phosphate batteries. That is a lot of power. You can use this as a backup for your home or whatever you want really. Now before you turn this thing on, you need to check your connections. Every connection needs to be tight. So wiggle each and every single one and ensure that there is a good connection. Even a single bad connection could cause a lot of problems. Now we can turn it on. So we're gonna flip on the on switch. Now let's test the voltage. We have 52.6 volts. Now before we connect this to our solar power system, we need to ensure that every battery is active and none of them are giving error codes. If you see a slow green flashing LED and the red LED is not on, that means everything is working properly. And you should see a state of charge indicator and that will tell you how much charge you have left in this battery. Next step is actually connecting this battery to my main solar power system. The recommended size of cable is four aught gauge. These can handle the current that these bus bars can safely deliver. And how you connect to these bus bars will determine how much current is being fed in and out of each battery. That is called current sharing. Now because this is a bus bar system, if we were to connect the main conductor right here and right here, this battery would be cycled faster and this one would be cycled slower. So that means that this one would die before the other ones. So to avoid this problem, we're gonna use a diagonal configuration. So that means we're gonna connect one main conductor right here and one main conductor down here. But something you need to know about the diagonal configuration is that this server rack from Signature Solar comes with the bus bar configured in a way so the main connection is right here and the main connection is right here. So when I first got this rack, I removed this bus bar with a screwdriver, I rotated it 180 degrees, and then I mounted it back in place. That way the main connection point is down here and then the main connection point on the other side is up here. That will give us the diagonal configuration that we need. Now we're going to attach the cables to the battery, but we need to shut the battery down. This will allow us to run the pre-charge resistor circuit to charge up the capacitors inside the inverter that we're connecting to. So leave the circuit breakers in the on position, but we're going to have to press this reset button until these lights turn off. So use a small screwdriver and press this button. And now the lights are off. Now we need to repeat this step with all of the batteries. One, two, three, four, five. There we go, five seconds works. Now all the batteries are turned off and the circuit breakers are in the on position. Now we can safely connect these cables to the battery. So first the negative. And that is a tight fit, my goodness. Now this lug is too large for this bus bar, so I actually made an adapter. But Signature Solar will have cables that actually work with this bus bar, so I would go with those if you can. Oh, look at that. The batteries turn themselves on. That's because I put them in parallel with another battery that's attached to the system. But two batteries have not turned on, so let's manually turn those on. Now, when you turn it on manually, it will run the pre-charge resistor circuit, and that will safely charge up the capacitors in your inverter. And that is crucial if this is your only battery and you're not putting this in parallel with anything else. So let's turn on the last one. And now all of the batteries are turned on. Now, even though each battery is on and they should technically be working, I like to manually check each one with a DC clamp meter. We're going to ensure that current is flowing in and out of each battery. First, I'm gonna add a large load to these inverters. I'm gonna charge up my Tesla. So first turn on the inverters. Now my car is connected and we have a lot of current flowing out of this battery and into the system. So over here we have 50 amps and over here we have 48. So from this battery we have 97 amps. So let's check how much current is coming from each battery. So first battery is 18 amps, second battery is 18 amps, 
third battery is 16 amps, fourth battery is 16 amps, fifth battery is 15 amps, and the sixth battery is 20 amps. But this much variation is very common. I've been building a lot more server rack batteries lately in all sorts of different wiring configurations, and you're gonna get that much variation every single time. Furthermore, these are brand new batteries and the state of charge might vary. So we need to cycle these together and retest later. What I'm mostly concerned about is current flowing in and out of each and every pack. If one battery has green lights and there's zero current flowing in or out, then you have a problem. Try resetting that battery manually and flipping the breaker on and off. If you still do not have current going in or out, you need to contact Signature Solar because that BMS might be fried. It's very, very rare, but you need to check for it. Also keep in mind that the larger the load, the greater the variation in current from each battery. If instead of 100 amps, we were pulling 20 amps, the variation between these packs would decrease. Now if we pull 500 amps, the difference in current from each pack can be quite significant. But if it doesn't exceed 100 amps for each one, for your specific application, you're good to go. Now in a future video, we're gonna cover communication and how to set that up with these inverters and these batteries. But for this video, it's very crucial that people have tight connections and check the current on each battery and ensure that your battery is actually working before you connect the communication system. So stay tuned for that video in the near future. Anyways, I hope you guys liked the video. I will also have a blueprint of this configuration for split phase output on my website, and you can buy these batteries with the link below. These are the cheapest batteries you can buy on the market and they're very nice and compact like the size of these server rack batteries compared to the competitors is really nice anyways i'll see you in the next video and thank you so much for watching bye